And we are back with Let's Talk Autism. And now we are joined by Susan Cabot. Uh, Susan is the executive director of the Autism Institute at the Mailman Siegel Center for Human Development at Nova Southeastern University. Welcome, Susan. Thank you. And you have a, if I were to go through your bio, it's, it would take the rest of the show. She, uh, <laughs> you have quite a bio. Uh, and background in autism research and development. And she's and, the author of this amazing book that I'm holding up in my hands. It is the Setting Up Classroom Spaces That Support Students with Autism Spectrum Disorders. And it would take us a week to go through her entire resume, but suffice it to say, she has not been sitting still idly. No. She's been working in this field for a long time. Uh, Susan, we're thrilled to have you. Should we be referring to you as Dr. Cabot? No, still okay. is fine. Okay. Okay. Susan, tell us a little bit about the book and what is in, in the contents of the book and why it's important. Well, one of the areas that I feel is so important in terms of setting up classroom spaces uh, for our students on the spectrum, to me it's really a foundational part of an educational program. And uh, it's really, we found it to be really important and that when a classroom is well organized, everybody in the classroom feels better. The staff feel better, the students feel better, everything is where it's supposed to be, the learning centers are well defined so that children are not continuously trying to run out of them, the, teacher, the teachers have their materials arranged in the spaces that they're going to be using them. All the spaces are visually engineered so that whatever visual supports you need to support the children's communication are right there. Um, and we find that really it cuts down on a lot of behavioral issues in our children. That book really focuses on the physical environment itself, but we do feel that there are a lot of other organizational strategies in terms of the way the day is structured, the periods of learning, what kinds of activities are put into what blocks of time, uh, how the staff are zoned and organized in the classroom, where they're supposed to be, what students they're supposed to be assigned to, um, all of that kind of designed in advance so that our classrooms are not um, people are not kind of flying by the seat of their pants, that everybody is uh, organized and, and everything is structured. And you work closely with Christine Reeve, who we had on the show a couple of weeks ago, uh, who's the co-author for this wonderful book. Um, I, I'm just always stunned by the fact, I'm a former teacher, and I think a lot of times people don't understand how difficult being a teacher is how many things there are that you have to, you have to be able to multitask in a way that I think would be stunning to the average person. And, and I think that people walk into a classroom and a lot of times if they don't have a background in education, they see chaos, even though a lot of times it's very controlled chaos, that it's a teacher who knows, like if you said to her, I need you to find this one piece of information, a good teacher would be able to find it, you know, very quickly because she's organized and, and knows where her stuff is. I'm saying she, but it could mm -hmm. be she or he. But, but a lot of times it is chaos because there are teachers who have just thrown things into a classroom and don't know where things are. And you can tell when you walk into a classroom by the children's behavior how well the teacher has this classroom running. But explain that to people who don't understand. Uh, so, yeah. It's, it's interesting because I am responsible for a preschool program that has 16 classes for children with autism. And we have a model here, and there's a lot of consistency between the 16 classes. You walk into them, pretty much there are the same elements. They look pretty much the same. But it is interesting that different teachers bring different strengths to the position with them. And if we have a teacher who herself is not organized, then 
we either have to find teacher aides who are very organized who can take on that role in the classroom. <coughs> in this case, we had a teacher whose classroom just became very disorganized. There were two children that were assigned to that class that had very challenging behaviors. And so this weekend, I actually had a team of five of the support staff and the teacher come into the classroom. And it took us about five hours, but we, re, we reset the classroom from top to bottom um, because the space wasn't working. The materials had become disorganized. The schedule wasn't working for the group of students that were in the class. And again, it's about, for me, starting from the bottom up. And that foundation really is that physical environment. And so people don't realize what an impact that has and how much work it takes to actually get the classroom organized the way you want it to be organized. You know, we took out excess materials. We moved materials. We moved centers in the classroom. And sometimes you have to move the space multiple times, uh, you know, the furniture around in the space multiple times to really get it to kind of feel right. So um, it is a, it's a big job to set up a classroom that really works for students on the spectrum. It, I, I can't even imagine how glorious that must have been for this teacher to have a team come in and, and have them reset her classroom. What did you see behaviorally from the kids in the classroom afterwards? Was it a ginormous shift? So it was. Um, it, and it wasn't only a shift for the children. It was a big shift for the staff. Yeah. Um, we did it over the weekend on Saturday, and Monday... Uh, everybody came into the classroom. At the end of the day, we had the staff, and this was a class that has three aides with the teacher and nine children. We brought everybody together, and, and we asked them, you know, what do you think went right? And they were so fast to say, you know, the space. The <laughs> space was so much better. The space worked right. We made the circle time area smaller. Uh, that worked better. We put it in the teacher had to be a little closer to the students. That worked better. Um, we rotated their centers so that there was less opportunity for the students to kind of escape between those centers as they were transitioning. And you know, far and above, where last week the students had actually been kind of clearing surfaces and emptying shelves and throwing stuff around. And when you walked in the classroom midday, it looked like a tornado hit it. Uh, one of the aides said, at the end of the day, I just looked around the room and I'm like, I don't have anything to clean up. Yeah. Uh, whereas before they were just spending a lot of time putting stuff back, uh, now they didn't have to do that. It was like everything had a place. There was not as much stuff available to the students. The students were staying in their spaces more than just wandering and, and throwing stuff around. So the, the staff themselves recognized that big difference and the influence that had on the students' behavior. Absolutely. I wish we had more time because I have a strong sense that we could talk to you about anything and that you would have the answers like Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> but we're out of time. I want to say this, though. Um, if, if your child is in a classroom and you don't feel like things are everything that they could be, very lovingly get this book for your child's teacher and, and give this to them. It's available at all major booksellers, correct? You can get it on Amazon. Yeah. And... Uh -huh. Uh, great book. Once again, setting up classroom spaces that support students with autism spectrum disorders. With charts and pictures and very easy to read uh, chapters that can help any teacher to have their, their classroom run better. 
Um, definitely, we want to have you come back. We keep saying we're going to do an autism in the classroom uh, seminar, and we, we definitely want you guys to come back and, and do a whole uh, segment of that with us, and I'll be in touch with you to do that, okay? That would be great. All right. Okay, thank Susan, you so thank you much. Happy us. holidays. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.